Welcome everyone to Fate, the Rise of Madness, session 31, The Hinge of the Ancients. That's Friday, Saturday adventure, it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The well, S is silent. Yeah, we, uh, I guess Sate would also be <laughs> a reasonably good word, uh, you know, but it's been Fate, even though the day changed, it'll just stay Fate, because it's, it's yeah. fine, it's known. Understood. Um, the last session was a little bit of an oddball one because only half of the people were able to make it at that point because of certain things. Um, people were busy with other parties and otherwise preoccupied. Um, so the four that were able to make it. We're pulled into a dream realm that was hosted by a sphinx. The sphinx that is the patron of one Corvus Sacramentum, uh, which is a cool name, by the way. Glad you like it. Uh, he, it, sphinx is a weird in that way. Uh, was this the a lady sphinx? I don't. Yeah, it's a lady one. Gyna Sphinx. Sphinx. Or G- Gyna Sphinx. Are there, are there many Sphinxes? Hmm? What? Somebody's always imagined all Sphinxes were females. It's, well, well, the Gyna Sphinx and the Andro Sphinx are, there are lady the... are ones, but she was... The Andro Sphinx has like a, more of a lion's head, mm. and then the Gyna Sphinx can have anything from feminine to like a very cat-looking or human-looking. Just, they're usually really beautiful. Yeah. Uh... She was willing to provide answers to questions, provided that they could answer the question, uh, what was her name? And it was a puzzle. It was a puzzle slash combat thing. Yeah, it was a combat puzzle. <clears throat> um, which is great. I'm gonna rearrange some cameras here so we can get Bob. Hey, Bob. What up? Dang on it. It's being rude. Should have done this before we started, but that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. A little sickness over here. Cool. That works. Yay. <clears throat> they had some questions answered. Remember, uh, Let's see. I actually wrote them down and what the answers were. Um, Corvus's question was where do we need to strike the cult of madness at his head? Um, Which is to say that uh, trying to find who the leader was. I didn't have a name or what that sort of present leader of the cult of madness was until later. I told you that I would get back to you. Yep. And the name that is provided is Shogoth the Devourer. S H O G G O T H. Oh, nice. <clears throat> the Devourer. Um, by the way. Is that a demon of hell? Is the, is the goat. Of yeah. particular interest to Corvus here is that when that name is spoken, yeah. there is. A flash of concern and fear across my face, or across her face. Oh, yeah. Like her realizing, oh, that's who's behind this. Uh oh. No, like or, oh. just saying the name is scary to her. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, which is poignant. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Mal's question was, what is the best way to dismantle the sickle organization? Uh, which was, the answer provided was, by quickly destroying the generals and the leader, you will set the sickle at enough disarray that it will unravel. But the important detail was that we need to take them out rapidly if we take them yes. out. Krishna's question was, what action can I take to hit the slave trade the hardest? And that answer was, in the southern continent of Chagalf's in the city of Shuth, north of the Claws of the Gods, there's an enclave of beholders that secretly run most of the slave trading across Arton. Yep, I had that one written down. Which is 
scary. Yeah. Uh, but not inherently insurmountable. Harriet's question was, what is the destiny of my son, Mekki, and will it involve me? Uh, the answer was a little vague, because the question was a little vague. Uh, the destiny of Mekki will, without fail, involve you. What his destiny will be depends on two things, when you find him, and whether or not Aaron Silverstream is still alive. Uh, <clears throat> we'll see how that play later. Hello, Hmm? Hello, Seven? Seven. Yeah, I have seven. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Harriet, Harriet just Five. hit Four. level. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've upgraded my character sheet. Him? I thought I was going to be up once, but maybe not. Did you? No, because I didn't know what he, what he, he wanted to take. Harriet, Harriet just at level 8, and several of you were very close to that. Well, so, I was going to check this out. Uh, she's a bit under the weather at the moment, uh, so she will be sitting out for now. She might come in later. Um, she's going to take some personal time. Uh, right now. PTO? It's been nights all up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. At least I'll give you points. <laughs> That's a one point. Here. 50 points or so off fire. Krishna uh, is here. All right. Uh, these were yours. This little set of dice. Oh, yeah. The, like, the Golden Dark, impossible to read one. Yeah. There, and there were a couple other funny ones, like a, a D20 shaped D10. Look. <laughs> like, it's a d20 shape, but it's a d10. It huh. only goes to 10 twice. Weird. Yeah. Is that the orange one? I think so, yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, roll it out there so they can see it. Yeah. Uh, that's a 10. <clears throat> and a full set. Oh, that's hard to see. Glow- I, yeah, I, I, I remember. But it's 1 through 10. The, that's it. The glow in the dark. Or 1 through nice. 0. Oh. Uh, it takes. They're like supercharged if you get a little UV lamp. Oh yeah, a black light. <clears throat> or black light. That works too. Well, that's what that is. I'm dumb. Sorry, I worked 66 hours this week. Woo! A little, a little I'm going to start that uh, <laughs> the 15th. Uh, the uh, Welcome Answer, I have to load this up with a fighter. W- which one do we... Um, hmm? What was it compared to? Should just use the Welcome Answer character sheet. Just character yeah, sheet. yeah, you just your Welcome Answer thing thing. What I'll do for you uh, is isolate it for you and like make a separate document and send it to you. Like maybe on I think I have it on Google Drive, so you don't have to scroll down to it every time. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to go through those again and update them because it's been a while since I've looked at them just to like check balance issues. I need to move the rage thing from the chef up from from level like seventeen. 17 yeah. Because uh, it's too late. It's like super yeah. late to have that. That yeah. should be an earlier thing. I was just like yeah. throwing Rage, it together. Yeah. Rage would be a third or fifth level yeah. thing for sure. Maybe it could be if it's a part of that class. It might. I might make it like a subset. Make an archetype. Um, within like maybe part of the uh, the uh, fiery path. Yeah. Which would be cool. That'd be cool. Um. By the way, Will, I saw a really interesting art uh, video about. A paladin hexblade uh, combination. Hmm. Oh, like the warlock hexblade. There were ways to even in fifth edition to like multi-class and get some stupid numbers. numbers. Like Sai, yeah. last campaign, yeah. Ranger Rogue yeah. is bonkers. Yeah, he was. Rolling I mean, so many like dice. It's like stupid damage. Even with just a bow, just stupid amounts of damage. Crazy. Um, Vax from from Critical Role and the Rogue th- Paladin. Nasty. And then Matt gave him so a caress that would sprout that wings. Smites on backstabs. That's crazy. Yeah. The um. I mean, just the damage output is stupid. Yeah. Ridiculous. Although, Straight Barbarian <laughs> is pretty worth it. <laughs> yeah. Does about the same basically because of Root of Vertical. Mm. I mean, what what was uh, Imch's max? Like 113 damage on a hit? Yeah, it was something like that. 113, I think. It was bonkers. Nasty. Very crazy. <laughs> on a hit? <laughs> well, it was on a turn. 
Because it was... Oh, that, oh, no, that, right. Yeah, that was, was on your turn. turn. <clears throat> um, and if you, if you did multi-class into the path of the totem, though, you would have resistance to everything except psychic. Yeah. <clears throat> Which is... And force. No. Force, too? Uh, or, yeah, force, psychic, and... Because, like, very few things have resistance to force damage. That's why magic missile is so cool. This is force damage. Yeah. It's not high force damage, but. <laughs> Do you remember what power it was? In, uh, by the way, all, it's been all a while damage since we've except psychic. Together. If you haven't, yeah. you've kind of noticed, so we're just like oh, kind of spending a little bit of time uh, in the chat. If the Azura uh, Realm is the general one, yeah. In third edition, you could make like a wizard that specializes in magic missile. And there were like feats and stuff that you could take to change the damage type and increase like the damage die and, and you could have a, some do some pretty nasty damage with magic missile. <laughs> oh, no, so Gerald, <clears throat> yeah. Words is written while raging you have resistance to all damage except psychic damage. Score. Period. That's crazy. Nice. The spirit of the bear makes you tough enough to stand up to any punishment. That's amazing. I might just do that with um, by the way, we are having some, uh, I think it's like obvious just disconnected and reconnecting for the stream purposes, but we're still recording, so... Um, what if you get an Ethernet cord to run during the stream? That wouldn't be a bad idea, actually. It's not something you have to leave up all the time, but you're, yeah. this is your kitchen table. You'll have to stay here. It's a good idea. Just make sure it's real long so yeah. that it won't... Force the trip. I've had I've had this part planned for a good while. <laughs> it's just been taking forever. We haven't uh, really had had a chance to fully play in a month. Over a month or yeah. so. Um, Then the coffee shop shut down. It didn't shut down, it Please. just shifted. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Uh, that's in, 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 in the session before. Um, if you recall, you all made it back to uh, Sartex, or made it to Sartex City, and decided to. Yo. I have a suggestion. So. It seems that we have like plenty of material to play with for, for each session, and now um, old boy selling scrolls to locations to stuff, but that would take probably a significant amount of time in and of itself. So perhaps we could buy one of those scrolls with the probability of getting the item, but you don't get your money back if you don't get it. So, like, 20% you, no, no, like the scrolls are for sale, box. it's like a library where you can anyone can go and like pick up a book. Oh, yeah, and, and read about the location of some of this stuff. Interesting. It's just dangerous to go get it. Hmm. So, like, makes sense. Say, oh, there's this one dope ass item in this terrifying dungeon. <laughs> Do we want to go get it? Well, maybe later. <laughs> um, Sorry to knock you off track. No, no, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you may get to Sartex City, and the first thing. I don't think uh, you did s search out a uh, armor smith to make the, arm, yeah. the uh, red, red the, the, the 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 red dragon's armor stuff, and that will take about a month in game. Is I I, I believe is what he said. Right. Yeah. Uh, just on account of it, you know. Yeah. yeah. It takes a lot of work to do right. that. And then you all headed. North toward the uh, Lyra Forest, wherein lies the Henge of the Ancients, a place that you were told you could go if you wanted to sort of join the Cult of Madness. Uh, as the uh, as as you head north. The first night 
of course. You're not even close to the forest. Like, it's going to be a couple days before you can get to the forest. The second night is when the sort of dreamscape happens with the four of you. And then the sort of second, the I'm sorry, the third day, uh, Mal is, like, becomes much more distant given the information that she received. And, like, sort of very self-thoughtful, like, very in- introspective, I believe the word would be. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the third night, everything's fine. Everyone sleeps well. In the morning, on the fourth day in the morning, there's a small pile of items and a note, and Mal is gone. The note essentially states that <clears throat> the information that she received from the Sphinx, which I will assume some of you disseminated that information. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, no, Corvus would have pretty much forced that. You know, given the information that she received about the sickle, she has a lot of planning that needs to happen, and so she left to return to lay a car to begin those plans for taking down the sickle. Uh, the pile that was left contains a number of interesting little items. Uh, just stuff that wasn't... I should probably keep that. The bag of holding was left. She doesn't need that, really. Yeah. Um, there's a decanter of endless water, probably. Uh, the, let's see. Perfume of bewitching she'll hang on to. I'm just trying to make sh- like check through this and see. Um, she keeps her potion of greater healing, but leaves. Oh goodness. How did, she has a lot of potions of healing. That was Finn's collection. That was oh. all in the bag of holding. <clears throat> oh, all of these were in the bag of holding? It, yeah, most all of them. Okay. Like, I think one we'll or say, two were out. We'll say then that she took the two? greater potion out. Yeah. And, like, one of the regular potions, just in case. Yeah, that that's completely understandable. There's, like, five or six more in there. So you guys know. And then, <laughs> okay. and then the rest <laughs> were left. Uh, left behind. Yeah, and there was a paperclip page in her notebook that had the bag of holding contents. Oh. Yeah. Okay. What did I choose? Maybe it's this. It's... Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's your handwriting. Yep. Sure. Okay. So, you may, of course hand that out as you will, or just hang on to it, uh, what have you. <clears throat> it's a little disheartening, because, you know, Mal's a pretty heavy damage dealer, yeah. but, you know, she has things that uh, she must do <clears throat> in a more immediate time frame. As you head north, the plains give way to smaller hill country, and that then shifts to shrubs and to thickening forest. Uh, Harriet, of course, feels the most comfortable here, though there are unfamiliar sounds that echo from deeper within the forest. The trees in the Lyra Forest are gigantic, and you can see very faint green glowing veins running through them. Small wildlife larger than the standard fair, scurry about the trees. On occasion, there are fruit-bearing trees as well, with similarly larger fruit upon them. There's a banana tree with bananas 18 to 24 inches in length. Uh, you pass an apple tree with head-sized apples, and etc. Magic of the forest seems to increase the size of the flora and fauna. Mm. I'm going to paint a spot trap. <laughs> 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 this could be problematic. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, <clears throat> there were times. Um, of course, in most forests, it's reasonably dark 
just on account of the canopy of leaves and the like. Um, <coughs> this is no exception. There are, you know, sequoia-sized oak trees with just enormous leaves. It's a good thing we don't um, have Tommy's tree. <laughs> <laughs> just burn it down. <laughs> I should have been here. They're mad at me, so. Covered in certain <laughs> syrup of that tree. Uh, that's hilarious. Um, up in the, in the sort of upper levels of the trees, you can occasionally see very thick, ropey webbing and, you know, horse-sized spiders. Yep. Uh, don't like that. <laughs> but they don't seem to be all that aggressive. Because, you know, they find food otherwise. Large flies. Yeah. <clears throat> the bugs are a little bit bigger, too. Uh, so, like, in, uh, like in Fallout 4, the blood bugs. Mm. Oh. Uh, there aren't many of those. The spiders t- tend to keep pretty, pretty, you know, they they eat those a lot. The cat is. And the blood bugs. Oh my gosh, blood. I hate those. Ca- the, uh, the, the, the cazadors. Yeah, cazadors. Go. They're deadly. Unless you're high level. Yeah, they'll just wreck you. Then they're nothing. Uh, <coughs> but we don't like my password here. Uh, do not. I do. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you do. <laughs> but. I think that they've worked on YouTube's channel. Like, we could just like, keep it to Bob and Holly or something. Or... <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think there's a, it's called Ben and Holly or something like that. Honey, uh, can you have this stuff? Yes, well, yeah, I will get you set up real quick. I appreciate it. And then we'll jump back in. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> so, so, so the. Fortune focus, the way it works is that I don't get to choose. I just gain an additional fortune focus fe- feature. It looks like from level six. But yeah. there's something on here that says Whispering Fate, I got a level three. Mm-hmm. Is that the random aid table? Yeah, so when you, you choose your path at level three, I think, mm-hmm. so you get every time you level up or every couple levels, you get one of those tables unlocked. I see. Because there was two, there was two different paths. I think there was one for the tables, and there was one for something else. And I chose the tables. You chose, yeah, you chose the tables. And that was the. Let's see, because I remember I used the random aid. Oh, is it Wild Destiny? Yes, yeah, sounds yeah. right. The yes. winds of luck do crazy things while you're around. Some good for you, some bad for them. Them being your enemies. Who knows what kinds of things that happen when you will your luck with Nancy. Okay. Here you go. Thanks, you go. You can bring that back over there. So, it, this says that I get whis- Whisper of Fate at level 3. At level 3 level, you gain ability to use, use a luck point to gain a luck die to roll to your own initiative and to affect any ally within 30 feet. Okay, so I've done that. Yes. Play the fates at level six. You get ability to use a reaction to spend two luck points. Allow a creature you can see within a luck range to treat an attack roll ability check or saving throw as a ten. Mm. What does that mean? Like, okay. is it adding a ten? No, no. it's calling a ten. So let's say that Quetzal has to make a Constitution saving throw and rolls a one. I see. You can spend two luck points. If he's and, within a certain radius. And yeah. it'll count as a 10 instead of really bad. Okay. <laughs> and I it can might use... still not be good. Yeah. But but it's way better than a 1. Yeah. Oh, and I got the the Will of the Wild. Oh, that is, is, is that the big awesome table? That's the one. Let's see. It has like a 0.3% chance to cast... Uh... uh no, I know which one you're talking about. Meteor Swarm. That, yeah, that's uh, that's a yeah. level nine. Okay. So we'll kill ourselves then. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, you have to roll between ninety. That's it's like you have to roll a ten. They, yeah, you gotta roll a ten. That, and then you have to roll ninety-seven to hundred on yeah. your percentile dice to see what happens. The other <laughs> spells are crazy too. Like, oh, yeah. fifty to twenty-six is a fireball at fifth level. Dope. Well, casters at fifth level can cast fireball. 
I think. Uh, yes, at fifth yeah. level. You get access to two third level spells. Yes, that's correct. So that's sick. All right, so I'm yeah. gonna write down. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. It's, it's wild magic, man. Yeah. It's so good. I just. I mean, I gotta see what I'm doing is I need to start rolling more on these because I'm in the Vegas at the end of this year. I'm gonna get my you your luck up. Yeah, get my luck yeah, up a little bit. Yeah, dude. Actually, I'm bringing <laughs> I'm bringing a lucky cat that thing with me, the Blarney rock. rock. I'm I'm gonna like eat that thing on the way there because if you kiss it, it gives you good luck. Yeah. But if you eat it and shit it out, I bet you it gives you more luck, right? Yeah. And yeah. yeah. hospital visits. Yeah. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a scientist. So. <laughs> I'm not a scientist either. <laughs> sounds about right. <laughs> and do we have hoodoo stats? So I remember I wrote them down and I had them and I lost yeah. them. Did we have a character sheet for them? We did, but I lost Hoot them. Hoot had a sheet that was written a long time ago, and I don't know if you still had it uh, or not. We might just need to pull up an owl bear. It's just an owl bear. That's all it is. I'll yeah. find it on here. I was going to add it to the character Ooh. sheet. Yeah. Um, the monster manual is somewhere. And lastly, I should know this. What do I add to get my max hit points? What's your hit dice? My hit die is plus what? That's what is your hit die? It's, it's D8. 40. 5 D8. D8. That's your con modifier. 1. one. So it's so 41? No, no, no. no. You're, you're level 7. D8. Oh, yeah. One so one. it's 7 D8. Right. So, which is 56, plus what's your con modifier? 1. one. So, plus, one plus seven. 7. So... 73. 63. <clears throat> yeah. Alright, there we go. 63 hit points. It looks better than what I had. No doubt. Um, no doubt. So, the level four. <laughs> so I do have third level spells because of multi class and table. Mm -hmm. And I have revivify. But you might not know any third level spells yet. I thought as a cleric you pick from your entire list each day who prepares the spells. Uh, well, that might be true. Yeah, I, I think the, cl the cleric class and the druid class, you have access to all of your spells. <laughs> Every day, yeah, and then it when you get up that day, you prepare right. these a certain amount. Yeah. Uh, it's based on wisdom modifier. That's true. Let me see the third number real quick. With the spell list. Yeah. Well, the 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 like the cleric. Yeah, the cleric spell list. Yeah. Um. There you go. Yeah, it's just like spell slots. Ooh, well, like spell slots. slots. Oh, like slots I have one fourth level spell slot right now, and okay. three third level, based off the feats multiclassing table. Um, now, I'm not fifth level cleric, so I don't have the oh, fireball right. yet. Cantrips known. That yeah. Increases. Okay. Yeah. I was like, my brain. Is... You were thinking okay. of spells known, but it was cantrips. Which is a uh, sorcerer. Slash... Yeah, sorcerer knows a specific yeah, spell number thing. and warlocks. Yeah. <clears throat> cool, cool. Um, okay. So I have Revivify. Uh, you just need a. I was going to ask, how is the material okay. component going to work for that? So here is, because I hate <laughs> material. material spell components. I hate them. It's like counting arrows. Mm. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Well, it money, sucks. if it's draconic magic, but that could make sense. Essentially, but. it will have a cost associated with it. So when you cast yeah. it, we will just assume that you pay the material cost. Okay. So it, it'll cost you 300, 300 white draka white draka. every yeah. time you cast it. Cool. Uh, for what that's worth. Yeah. Because, <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. It's in there like weight and stuff too. Yeah. It, well, it's just a tedious thing to have to remember to always buy. Yeah. And it's We're like, annoying, remembering to you know. eat. <laughs> <laughs> like rations. It's just a weird, just a weird. Plus, my magic doesn't work with the same kind of spell components. Yeah. As like Yours standard is Artec rules. based. Yeah. It's Artec. It's Technos based. For Technos. Uh, That's right. Great. Well, it, it it is Artec, but. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> we're gonna we're gonna continue. Um, on the second day into the forest, as you're making your way through. Um, some of the thudding sounds that are kind of deep within, right? Become louder, they grow even louder as you progress through. Eventually you come to the edge of a recently made clearing. And you can see a huge figure stomping around, uh, tamping down soil to make a space for his work. Oh, uh, uh, an enormous cage rests off to the side with an odd looking, somewhat reptilian insect creature within it. 
The chest the size of a tool shed rests adjacent to the cage. A large snake creature with a surprisingly intelligent look in its eyes rests coiled up adjacent to the cage. This is like on the other side of the cage. You're not like right next to the cage. But you, know, you can even see all that. The huge stomping being is a fire giant wearing huge plate mail emblazoned with the logo of the Cult of Madness mm. and wielding a great sword. Oh, so he's friendly. Yeah. <clears throat> Could be a good guy. <laughs> uh, is uh, that <clears throat> Crowley? <laughs> Thick Crowley? Thick Crowley? Thick Crowley. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to stop that. My is not working. I'm sorry. I'm just going to do what you got. Okay. <clears throat> Is is the, is the iPad not working? Well, no, the uh, the internet's working. This is the uh, the iPad doesn't have anything on it, and I don't know the passwords. I'll have to get her mom to fix that stuff. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, I gotcha. Um, what language is what languages does everyone speak? Because the creature, okay, the fire giant's falling around, but it's still talking out loud in a language, uh, and the snake creature. Is responding. They don't, by chance, have to be speaking bird, do they? <laughs> they're not speaking bird. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> they're not, I'm they're, out. they're not speaking avian. Or gnomish or celestial? Nope. None of that. Well, I'll oh, me out. do the comprehend languages thing whenever I hear a language I don't understand. Okay. Because that's. And an innate ability right. for the top. Just call up uh, Pindahos. That's right. Good friends. It's a racial thing. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was your call. Yeah. No, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Uh, that's totally fine. I hear something I don't understand. Oh, let me. Yeah. Let me switch that on real quick. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you kind of come in to their conversation, and the fire giant is speaking. Or I'm sorry, the snake thing is speaking. I'm the snake. I'm the snake. Why is he saying that over no, really again? No. <laughs> Get to me a math. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, it says, perfect place for the ritual. The fire giant replies, I know, why well, you picked it. So many bones. It's, it's, it's a, clearly some kind of naga. Because it's a yeah. highly intelligent snake that can actually speak. Yeah. Uh, and it's big. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, it's a spirit naga, to be precise. So many bones. <clears throat> so many tech dead. The giant mirrors. The cult of madness will not stand a chance. Is is what the, the snake responds there. The fire giant says, <laughs> they will die. Uh, the giant the fire giant slams his fist together in excitement. Uh, the the spirit naga says, Be wary. They should be here any minute. Uh... The speech drops. <laughs> the speech drops to silence as he continues to stomp around the clearing. They said the cult of madness won't stand a chance. Mm-hmm. Hold up! Yeah. <laughs> but that—that's basically meaning to us, because we're the only ones that are near. They're like, well, okay. Do we see anyone else so, nearby right now? No. The fire giant is wearing full plate mail. Yeah. And like a tabard, if you will, that has the symbol of the cult of madness on it. Oh. Uh, so, he did specifically say, the Cult of Madness will not stand a chance. So, glean what you will from that. Yeah. What would you like to do? Stay back. For now, I mean, I don't want Can them to spot us. we just walk around this corner? Yeah, I don't want to. You have to get it through I don't want to, I don't want them to spot us, if at all possible. Um, okay. Stay uh, well that away. will be some stealth checks. Stealth checks! <laughs> do you want this bag back? I uh, I don't need it. Okay. Can All right. It. Oh god. Oh, I'm still think. Well, my donkey, I can run pretty fast, right? With your what? I can run pretty fast on my donkey, right? Your donkey? My spirit horse, my chocobo. Oh. <laughs> oh I was like, oh, what are you talking about, yeah. donkey? Uh, I, theoretically, yeah. I mean, whatever the the sort of horse speed is. I'm sorry, I think guys. it's like fifty. <laughs> what's now, the, what's stealth. Here? Uh, for you, I think it's like a disadvantage, right? Well, that's just it. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to hang back. But then when they get in the thick of it, I can charge in. Mm, I, I mean, I, that, that's what I'm thinking. I want to stay far away. If I see something big, I'm going to just stay back. 
I got you. But, uh, I have disadvantage. You can fly around and shit in our eyes. I don't oh. know, and I rolled a natural 20. Ooh, <laughs> nice. Why not? But Wait, I have disadvantage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's well, a five. That sucks. That sucks. <laughs> 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 you can take him out and change what type of Minus three, of three to the five? Is your deck that booby? Yeah, yeah, something like that. Minus two. So <laughs> oh man. He got a three. Oh, I got a fourteen. Eleven. Nine. We are. De- you We're know what? We just yell. Group. <laughs> like, hey, oh, we're wait, here. I'm, I'm not stealthing. What am I doing? <laughs> um, I'm just hanging back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, you kind of moved up behind one of the big trees. And you were kind of listening in on their conversation. And then you go to kind of move back and say, well, let's just go around. And then uh, Cor- Corvus had a three. <laughs> uh, Corvus trips over a root. And he's in full plate. Mm-hmm. So he's just like, clank, 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 clank. <laughs> I'm like, what? Uh, the stomping <laughs> stops. What are you saying to me? And in common, the fire giant calls out. We hear you. Hail. I say, meow. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, you want to give me... I want to meow. Give me a uh, deception roll. It's like a robotic meow, too. Fourteen. Hmm? Fourteen. Fourteen. All right, start purring. Yeah, that's <laughs> not going to work. Damn! <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, instead of meow, I had to say, I'm a cat. Meow, I'm a cat. I found Hoot Hoot Stats. Good. So he is ready. <laughs> You are no cat. All right, Corvus, talk this time. Hoot yeah. hoot! <laughs> You've got to like the robot voice. Meow. Meow. I am a cat. <laughs> meow. Oh, that was something else I meant to say. Uh, one of the previous mornings, could I have cast my ritual of uh, find familiar? Yeah. It takes I think eleven minutes for me to cast it. Okay. What? Um, uh... I have a little owl. A little owl. They have a sixty foot flying speed. <clears throat> 120 foot dark vision and advantage on seven yeah. checks. Based Popeye on has Earth. a friend. Aren't you an owl? I'm a crow. Oh, you're a crow. A little raven sorry. crow thingy. Yeah. Uh, but there's an owl now that has a very good perception. Has advantage on sight or sound based mm. perception. I don't know how I feel about you using our brethren to uh, do your dirty work. <laughs> this is no ordinary brethren. <laughs> This it's, is a I celestial. It's like a, it's it's like a, a spirit a, magic. Yeah, it's, it's a, a summoned. Sw- I'll just say <laughs> that <laughs> as, it, as it's being celestial, uh, it'll have mm-hmm. on a little like tuxedo button down and bow tie and a monocle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like that. Because it's not actually an owl. It's a Wh- celestial what spirit. What is this owl's name? Um, or this familiar's name, I guess, because you can change what yeah, it is. Yeah, it'll be my familiar's name. Um, you can get back to me on that. Yeah, what it'll be like? like Professor something. Professor Belvedere. Mr. <laughs> 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 Bigglesworth. Yeah, I think Mr. Professor Bigglesworth is going to be it. I think Professor Bigglesworth. Bigglesworth. Professor, Bigglesworth. Professor Bigglesworth. Bigglesworth. Yep. Nice. Okay. Professor Bigglesworth. <laughs> nice. Um, anyway. That's a great, awesome powers reference. Yeah. So. It's just going to sit on my shoulder most of the time until okay. combat starts. Gotcha. Uh, very good, very good. So, yeah, we walked towards the... We happened to be spotted by the giant of the Naga. So, so happened to be. You, when you were kind of backtracking to make your way around, you tripped on a root. And clang, bang, yeah, bang. Yeah, yeah. So he did kind of call you out in common. Uh, step into the clearing. If we may see you. And to know your intention. No, we're not wearing Cult of Madness robes right now, right? No. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> no, he is. Yeah, but yeah. we're not. But he sounds like he's against them somehow or another. Uh, by the way, the language... I don't... Does, does Comprehend Language let you know what the language is? I think so. Let, let me read it. Uh, or just let you understand the language. Let me pull... 
Because uh, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, for, well. say. No. You understand any spoken language that you hear, or you understand the literal meaning of anything spoken. Okay. <clears throat> but okay. So then we will say that. And we are good. Got everything over now. Nice. It wouldn't make sense to me that you would understand the language and not know what the language is that you're reading. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or, or hearing. I guess it'd be too convenient for him, for the giant himself to be like, I'm speaking draconic. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> you can understand that they are speaking abyssal. Curious. Yes. Out of the nine hells, or no, out of the, the, the abyss. abyssal hell. Abyssos in my world. Yeah, abyssos. Uh, which is where Malefice lives. Not another planet. Huh? Not another planet. It's another planet, yeah. or plane, as everyone calls it. Yeah. It's where Malachis, the sort of Lord of Undeath, so lives, as well taco. as yeah. Aldea, yeah. the goddess of death. On sort of separate halves. It's interesting. Anyway. <clears throat> do you step out? What do you do? Because you're still kind of behind the big ass tree. I mean, we might as well come out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. We say hell. 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 Well, hell, hell Papa. P.S. P.S. That was uh, a command word for something. What, what was it? That's for the Mecca. The Mecca. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. That was my fault. Yes. <laughs> that was my fault. <laughs> Uh, uh, camping One, if you're interested, uh, can be found largely on my channel, and then the, the rest of it's on the separate D&D channel you see on, on, on the stream. Can I take a bear Yeah. Yeah. If you're interested, um, the you can definitely see the progress we made, because it started out as just audio, and then progressed to where we are now. So, good times. Anyway. Uh, you all step out. And the fire giant kind of looks over all of you. And, like, <laughs> um, this fire giant, by the way, does not appear to have been affected by the forest. He's like so a normal fire he's giant. Like, he's like a normal 25 feet tall. See, when you tell so me that, it makes me think we're going to have to fight. You know? <laughs> uh, I'll fight him. And he, he says... Uh, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was our team. <laughs> 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 uh, he kind of looks you all over and says, Yes, you are the group that I was expecting. Uh, my master... I don't think so. It's like a robot. <laughs> my master told me... This is not the George you're looking for. That <laughs> you are all... On your way, uh, and that I should expect your arrival around this time. Interesting. He's your master. Imagine you'll meet him soon enough. Uh, he means you no harm by any means, and only wishes to see the cult of madness removed. All right. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Mm -hmm. That's true, I suppose. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> it's questionable. <laughs> Imagine that uh, you have questions about any... Do you have any questions? Ah, no, we use this roll with it. <laughs> Why... Uh, this all seems normal. You all seem uh, not really stealth oriented, uh, and you come unprepared. You plan to go just charge in and fight the cult of madness? Yeah. No, they, they're yeah, hiring. We, we, we like being paid. We'll work. Well, that's true. <clears throat> 
you know what they truly seek. Yes. Uh, a five-star chef. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> no. Although, there perhaps may be a use for that. No. They seek to return to chaos. Chaos would be detrimental to the world as we know it. Yep. The order of things will essentially be completely changed and destroyed. Um, It's likely that should that happen, the guild will probably unravel. Which is not not great. No bueno, got it. Well, you know, I got problems with the guild myself, so. You do have problems with the guild. Yeah. Why? I don't know. There's some, some rules that just don't make a lot of sense to me. But I don't want to see it unraveled. I think we do need a, a system of, of government. Rules are there. Still there. The maintenance of order. It is the one. The chaos that the cult of madness will bring will ruin many lives. The wealthy will likely remain unaffected as Dad. money has a tendency to solve most problems. Dad. Hang on. Um, it will largely be a problem for peasantry. Yes. You peasants. <laughs> yes. 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 Peasants. <laughs> I removed my pipe from my mouth. Yes. <laughs> yes. Peasants. With like little bubbles going out of it. Yeah. Smash. Yes. Smash. Peasants. Smash. What color are the bubbles? Uh, right, right now we'll just go with a, an actual white snow color. Okay. It'll be traditional yeah. today. Okay. Uh, we the master and I seek to uh, let's see find ways to stop the cult of madness in that will theoretically at least uh, not result in a lot of war uh, two factions. Our plan was just to murder them. <laughs> yeah. So we're not really big on planning. We are kind of open to there, ideas. Okay. Well, <laughs> that has potential. You can destroy the leadership. The leadership. Make everything else crumble. Uh, strangely enough, in con in contrast to uh, their goal, they do have a hierarchy. Although I suppose there is always some order in chaos. Uh, <clears throat> Was the fire giant in a cage? No. No, he's not. With a snake. There's the like reptilian insect type creature. Oh, that's right. Uh, if, in fact, if you want to kind of look at it, give me a nature check. I can, in theory, tell you what it is. Oh, I can do that. That's right. Depending on how well you roll. That's uh, 14. 14. Okay. Uh, you have. You're. you're you have an 18 intelligence? Uh, 20. 20, nice, okay. Um, you have, of course, you're well read on n- numerous things. You are familiar with this creature. It is called a Rimarhaz. Uh, and you also know that its meat is. Uh, it's tender. And. You have to. Uh, I think Rimmer has use. They're like fiery. Let me check or something real quick. <clears throat> I don't remember. So I take it that's dinner. <laughs> no, you've had it before. No, it was dinner for the giant though. No. Oh. I mean, <coughs> it could be, in theory, but yeah. Um, you actually have to cool its meat to be able to eat it. Mm, to reverse cooking. Yeah. 
because uh, it's a very naturally uh, heated creature. I'll come up with a new recipe. I'll come up with a new recipe. <laughs> This is delicacy in some places. <laughs> Who's hungry? <laughs> uh, there are. This is the fire giant again. There are numerous folks as yourself who have come to the hand of the ancients to hear out the cult of madness. <clears throat> Their leadership is very charismatic and will likely sway many of them to their side. Going in full bore to attack <clears throat> their leadership there is probably a death sentence. You can try, but well, I don't recommend it. We could accept what they say to get closer. Infiltration is definitely an option. Uh, but they have ways of control. A neutral good. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> that I can you. go something. I'm sure it's neutral. I don't care. <laughs> if you That's decide neutral. to infiltrate, if that is a goal of yours, then it's important that you steel yourselves against those types of control. Mm. So, you want to try? Like a Magneto helmet? Yep. Potentially. Okay. <laughs> He's like, I love the X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> Ian McClellan. I love, I love Ian McClellan. The best. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you recommend us to do, Fire Giant? What, what is your plan? Well, I'm glad you asked. My plan, you see this beastie here, Yep. Looks tasty. Well, we're not going to eat it. <clears throat> In a forest like this, many creatures have lived and died here. And their bones are interred under here, within the forest. The Rimmerhaz, we have trained to dig straight down. What that will do Assuming we go through with this, we haven't decided just yet. Depends on you, actually. Um, what this will do is <clears throat> it will dig until it reaches the fiery technos deep within, which will, of course, come up from down there. And as we know, technos, when it encounters the dead, creates what are called the tech dead. Uh, undead creatures infused with magic. Yep. These can then be directed to where the cult of madness is meeting. Which will at the very least reduce their numbers somewhat. But if you bring back all these things from the dead, isn't that going to throw off the balance of the veil? Which is what they're trying to achieve anyway. The spirit naga speaks up. Kind of switches also to common. My goddess is actually okay with this plan. Chaldea, the goddess of death. And the reason is Okay. The cult of madness has been killing hordes of monsters. That technos is being funneled into the veil. Uh, and this is a way to counterbalance that. Alright, but if, what if, like, when the tech dead kill the cultists it's also going to funnel more into the veil well 
that's true. But the ratio is important in maintaining balance. Uh, and even if a tech debtor killed, that tech knot isn't returned to the bail. That tech knot remains uh, on the material plane. Okay. So the risk in this case is worth it a little bit. I but also want to ask the fire giant why he's wearing Cult of Madness <clears throat> clothes. It's easier to move around the Cult of Madness when you act as one of them. Okay. <clears throat> is that... Now, this is an option that we have. I'm just preparing the area for if we go through with that. What no. happens to the tech that afterwards? Well... They will likely continue to roam the forest. Um, creatures, animals, and the like know to steer clear of them. So I'll probably kill them. Where? Yeah. And that's okay. That's certainly not. XP. XP. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> it's like a mob spawner. In my <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really. That's what. That's what. Uh, that's what Gandalf did. Buy you fools, I want all the XP for me. Yeah. 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 Right to Baylor by myself. Right. Hey, as long as you do one point of damage to it, you get XP for it. <laughs> <laughs> this should also have locks to it. So who's who's gonna control the tech dead once they come back to life? Can you just control them? We have ways of doing so, yes. And if it becomes too much we can just lead them bodily. Mm. You know, hey. Sounds a lot like starting a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <I'll come. laughs> not really sounding, it is. Time is coming near that big decisions like this will need to take place. Wow. Um, ah. The fact that you're here <gasps> is actually very good. Our, uh, my. My master should be back soon. Okay. I would like to speak with you about what plans you have, what plans we can make together, and how we continue forward. <coughs> if it is not a route of using the Remarhas for this purpose, then perhaps we can indeed consume it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not opposed to this. I like Rimmer Haas myself. Although I am personally incapable of cooling it. Yeah. Perhaps you might have a, a means of doing that. I'm sure we can find some way to do it. Uh, so someone's got cold touch or something. <laughs> cold touch is uh, chill touch is necrotic. Chill touch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lies. <laughs> We shall see. Okay. And he uh, he goes over to his chest, his tool shed sized chest, which is just a regular chest for him. Mm -hmm. uh, opens the, he has like a big old key. He uh, opens the lock on it, pops it open. There's a bunch of stuff in there. There's a, uh, well, you probably are too short, except possibly Harriet, uh, to really see inside. Certainly, a stretch see inside. And, and large. I'm sure I can get <gasps> I'm only four, four, six. Yeah. I'm also a short bird. But he starts to take a few things out of the chest and kind of lay them out. There is, like, on top of, of everything, and he kind of sets it aside, are um, more Cult of Madness robes that are varying sizes, kind of like a bundle of, of, of a bunch of those. Uh, there is huge bundles of cloth, like heavy cloth, that you can kind of see takes up most of the uh, 
most of the chest is his claw. Um, he takes out these like pieces of uh, like twenty club-sized stakes, like tent stakes, uh, and he starts kind of putting together this big tent. Fire giant sized tent. <laughs> and um, you guys just hanging out. If you want to talk, like ask him any questions well, while he's doing this, you can theoretically help him a little. I'm going to take a couple of pies. Okay. I figure that's probably a good idea at this point. Make a little cook fire. Yeah. Um, this, you can definitely count this as a short rest. If, yeah, if we're doing a little like short rest period, I want to take a minute to sit down and meditate and fly around scoping the area with uh, <coughs> Professor Bigglesworth. Okay. Um, Popeye cast, uh, joins, joins Missile. Professor yeah. Bigglesworth. I'm going to cast uh, Detect Evil. Okay. Um, oh, I think he's evil. He's a fire giant, right? This fire giant is not evil. What? Actually. Nothing in the chest is evil either. No, nothing you pick up. On the chest is being able. Excellent. Um, the spirit Naga has a uh, it's very faintly evil aura, but it's not it's nothing that you would immediately like, oh I gotta kill that thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because uh, Naga and, and, and Arton are creatures that serve the goddess of death. And some of the things that Anaga have to do are not always pleasant. Yeah, they're reptiles too, so. And they're, yeah, they're reptiles as well. So, so those couple of kids and. Yeah, so. So he, he built his tent. It takes him a little while. Uh, and by the way, this is a huge clearing. Mm. It's not. You know, it's big enough to house the tent and still have plenty of space for activities, as it were. <laughs> well, it's true! Uh, <clears throat> as you're waiting, Corvus, or uh, rather Professor Bigglesworth, uh, which is a lot to say every time. You're familiar. Just say the professor. The professor. <laughs> the professor. professor uh, and, and Popeye sort of do some flybouts. You don't fly them too high because there are in the upper tiers of the forest, there are, you know, big ass spiders and the like. Well, how like how t- tall is the banaki? Ban- canopy. <laughs> banaki. Canopy. Ba- canopy. <laughs> how tall is the canopy? The canopy. Uh, like two hundred feet tall. Like more. Super super tall. Yeah. Okay. This is a gigantic forest. Um. So it's not even well lit down at the ground level <clears throat> at all. It is, the trees are big enough and they're spaced far enough apart that there are like beams coming in that come in. But most of it's in shade. But it's pretty shady. Um, all right, well, in that case, kind of stick to you below the branch level, but at the first branches, kind of scoping yeah. out around probably a few hundred feet. I, okay. It says I can communicate within a hundred feet, but then it doesn't really say anything about how far I can see and hear through the eyes of. I gotcha. Uh, right. So you can still see through its eyes, you just can't communicate with it. Yeah, but I can... Um, if I if I am seeing, I'm hearing too. <clears throat> yes. So, there isn't really a lot going on anywhere nearby. Anywhere super nearby. You do pass uh, over a handful of other adventurers that are making their way through the forest toward the Hand of the Ancients. Just like in awe of the hugeness of of, of the forest. You see a couple of mastiff-sized squirrels. Awesome. uh, Which are... Kind of terrifying. Kind of terrifying. Yeah, for sure. They have like the the same green (laughs) veininess as the trees do. Yep. Because they've, you know, they have to eat something here, and it makes them grow bigger. Yep. By the way... I want to eat everything here. <laughs> it is possible to get food from here and consume it. 
And it functions similarly to the enlarge spell. Uh, the more that, like the longer you stay in the forest, the more permanent that change becomes. Ah. Now, clank, because you can't eat. Right. So it doesn't really affect you at all. But, you know, spending long periods of time in this forest... And not many people do it because it's, you know, kind of a hassle being that big most of the time. Now, is the effect, the effect like, if I eat it, am I just going to immediately get big? Or is mm-hmm. it, Okay. Huh. Um, I want to make some jerky out of some sort of animal. <laughs> Enlargement jerky? Yes. <laughs> that's genius. <laughs> okay. So You'll have to find something mushroom. to kill it, but that's certainly... I see a big squirrel right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I'll throw there are no big it. squirrels around the big stompy fire giant. <laughs> Uh, Let's go hunting. Well, yeah, you longer. you might mention that <clears throat> you want to get a squirrel, and I might be able to help you there. But you, I mean, it's <laughs> certainly an option uh, to go to go hunting. I'll cook it with my breath weapon. <laughs> Smoker. Yeah. Um. Well. And of course, as time passes, he gets the tent put up. He goes into, he leaves the clearing for a little bit and comes back with a couple of uh, twigs from the from the forest floor. And they're sets up a trees. little, yeah, they're like little, little trees and sets up a fire, giant sized fire. Uh, <laughs> so it's a bonfire. It's a huge <laughs> yeah, bonfire. All right. Uh, and, you know, he pulls out of the chest again. A cask of strong brandy. I was expecting, I was expecting fireball. <clears throat> Pulls out a fireball! Uh, we should misdirect those heroes that are coming to meet with the cult of badness. We should be like, hey, the meeting's called off, guys. You should go to some other city. Go, go on the wall. <laughs> yeah, also, and he kind of takes this into the tent. He doesn't have a bed. But he does, out of the bottom of the chest, pull out a twin bed sized uh, pillow. Just a he's gigantic pillow. Uh, and, you know, pillow fight. Yeah. Excuse me. Like not across the middle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. There is uh, also, and he, he kind of takes one of the uh, one of the little trees he, he, he brought over and he takes out Again, out, out of the chest, uh, a huge thing wrapped in cloth, and you can't really tell what it is at first. When he unwraps it, it's just like a slab of meat. Oh, yeah. uh, possibly a cow, like a whole cow. Oh yeah, a whole cow. Uh, but it isn't. Uh, it's it's unclear. That's what it is. exactly what it is. It's just a big chunk of meat. Allow me to kick this up. Oh, uh, certainly. Yeah. Are you all hungry? Yes. It isn't, by the way, the sort of magic glowy type meat. Yeah, it's regular, regular meat. meat. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he, I don't he want wants no part of that. Yeah, I don't really want any part of the big magic glowy mm-hmm. stuff. Either. I got a 23 on my freaking check. Nice. So it's it's um, a nice dinner. It's a nice dinner. <laughs> so we'll say that you use like half of the pinches of seasoning from your pouch. Oh, uh, yeah. Because it's a big chunk of meat, so it takes a lot of seasoning. Uh, but you season it up, it begins to smell amazing. And then you hear more thudding. Heavy, heavy thudding. Mm. Like, Masturbating. heavier than the steps of the fire giant. Oh, <laughs> and then you begin to see... creature in the distance of the forest. Again, it's kind of a shadowy thing. But this creature is gargantuan. Mm-mm-mm. And it has to move in such a way that it sort of passes between trees here and there. Uh, because it's... It can't walk underneath all the branches. Uh, it, right. It's getting very big. 
ridiculous. It's just gigantic, so it has to kind of move. It's like the through. big world in Mario Brothers Three. Yes, <laughs> everything's just very big much big. so. Uh, very much so. It gets closer and closer, and you can see it. It's it becomes clearer what it is. Um, it's gray. Normally gray skin is. Uh, it has a. It, it definitely has signs of the green growth stuff. Growth. <clears throat> but it also appears to have uh, quite a bit of like algae <coughs> or moss kind of thing growing <coughs> upon it. Is it a giant can or <coughs> some sort of troll um, thing? It's. <coughs> it's four legged. Four legged. So, you know, it's very stompy as it walks. Um, it is. It has um, enormous. Oh, wait for just a second. It has enormous uh, ears and a nice trunk. Oh, the yellow trunk. Like a twenty-foot they... trunk. Just huge. Big <coughs> elephant with huge elephant. Green is this, your, is this your boss? <laughs> is, this, is this him? Is this the guy? Uh, love you too. Let me get this responded real quick. This Ganesh. <clears throat> there is a large mossy. It looks like it's hand woven almost, like a mossy cloth across its back. And sitting upon its back Druid? is a is the biggest Sasquatch you've ever seen. Uh, That's a huge bitch. <laughs> this this Sasquatch has Sasquatch. Also has uh, also been consuming of the forest. And from what you can tell, it's been a little while since that's been the case. He's pretty uh, big. So he is about the same height as the fire giant. In fact, maybe a little taller. Ooh. Just huge. Gigantic. More than twice uh, Harriet's, size. Harriet's height. Uh, there is, as, as it sort of gets closer... It doesn't come out fully into the clearing, and the Sasquatch, you know... But it's obviously there. ...swings around and then hops down. Yeah. Landing with a heavy thud. And he strides into the clearing. And it's like there is immediate recognition. On Harriet's face? On, on, on Harriet's face. And... Cool. Guys, I want to keep looking uh, too. <laughs> it is like she's in shock because of the size. Because she's she does not remember him being this big. Yeah. Because he wasn't this big the last time she had seen him. But uh, she says, "Dad." Oh. 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 Papa! 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 Naive grim papa. He rushes out over and <laughs> picks her up. Picks her up. Which, 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 which brings back um, curious like s- spot memories of when she was a kid. Yeah, because the size scale is right for a long time ago. Right but for that. Uh, and there's like a big hug. He is sort of mossy as well, just like. Just as you'd expect with him being that big, it's impossible to clean. Got some druidy, mossy moss stuff going on. Very cool. Very cool. Very swag. I like it. Very cool. Very swag. I like it. We'll get into. Because they're probably going to go off and have a private conversation for a while, eventually. But we'll get to that when Melanie is feeling a little better. She can ride on the shoulders again. <clears throat> For sure. <laughs> Easily. Uh, after that sort of meeting calms down to 
relative normalcy. <laughs> he sits down by the fire with, with all of you and says, I'm glad you made it on time. I didn't realize we, were an, we had an appointment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I heard from the big Squatch boys, that Harriet was alive. <coughs> um, I hang on. Cool. I that on that. Kiss That's me. heavily copyrighted. Yeah. <laughs> I bet you she like goes through Twitch and it's like, oh, hey, you're my song. <laughs> Give me that money. Well, <laughs> her, but the people yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, money, me. Right to that. money me, please. <clears throat> we don't want to do you have any uh, sirens, Kate? Uh, probably. I could get it yeah, somewhere along it. the way. Mm-hmm. I'll get it at the break. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> How much longer we got for a break? Mm, a few uh, well, we've got. It's we're an hour and sixteen in now. Okay. So about five minutes. So yeah, it'll be about nine. five, ten minutes. Something like that. Cool. Works for me. <clears throat> you are here to meet with Cult of Madness? Yes. I guess. What <laughs> is... What is your purpose for meeting with them? We're gonna... To understand them and try and learn more about them and Kill them all. I mean, I ultimately infiltrate and destroy them, but <laughs> <laughs> we uh, wanted to at least approach. Yeah. A noble thing to learn about both sides before we make a decision. Indeed. Uh, these are quite dangerous individuals. I'll explain one moment. Be right back. Yeah. Haven't met me yet. Yeah, Do you see the statue of my beak? You know what that means? I kill people. I was in prison, man. <laughs> it was like not even 48 hours. Yeah. It's, done again. <laughs> it's only one way in, one way, one way out. I almost shaved my feathers. Prison changed me. I had to shake a dude. <laughs> You did, didn't you? Check <laughs> okay. Um, you want to go ahead and take our break? Yeah, sure. Good. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take our break, and we'll have some more chats with uh, Amiris, I think is his name. I'll have to look it up because I don't remember. Harry's dad. Papa, Mama, Papa. All right.